Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Monday, October 24th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR News, guys. Starting with an update on the story I talked about yesterday, that game franchise known as Game in the UK, and their boneheaded decision, pretty much by unanimous decree, of charging for Sony PlayStation VR demo use. All right. Where we left that story, it was essentially that they were charging it, and most of you, and today, most of the UK media, BBC, Mirror, uh, you name the newspaper, they probably got an article on this, pretty much overwhelmingly negative, and yet somehow, despite all of that, game issues a statement. In no small part, probably due to pressure from Sony, who obviously want nothing to do with this public relations nightmare uh, because the statement starts out that this is a game-led initiative. So they make very clear that they're the boneheads responsible for the boneheaded decision to charge. It's the second part of the statement that just absolutely blows me away. It's an absolute doozy. It is 100% schlock worthy. There we go. Here it is, word for word. The payment allows us to ensure that we have dedicated staff manning the PlayStation VR pods who have been fully trained to adhere to best practice demo guidelines. The only problem with that game is there are no freaking best practice demo guidelines. They do not exist. You invented them. You invented them. They have never existed. And you're in a position now where you could retract, save some face, and maybe recover a little bit from this, or you can entrench yourselves further and just look stupider by the day. I think you're choosing the latter. So really quickly, again, super boneheaded. Very boneheaded. Now, my opinion is, personally, I think they will see reason and they will ultimately cave. Now, speaking with a lot of you yesterday, especially those in the UK, you weren't that surprised by this. You disagreed for the most part, but you were not surprised given, uh, given games, you know, um, precedence in other areas. And I kind of didn't really get it just because I don't have any prior experience with those guys until today. Now I hear what you guys were saying loud and clear. If this is par for the course, absolutely bang on with what you guys were saying yesterday. So let's see how they react and uh, if they retract because that is absolutely no way to market. And the other part, just quickly, I'm going to throw this in and then I won't talk about these guys unless there's a retraction again, right? But the other part was, you only get the money back if you purchase the unit right away. In other words, if you play, want 24 hours to think on it, come back the next day, sorry, you don't get, you don't get that uh, refunded to you. Now, at the very least, I would think they're probably going to retract that portion. And if you ultimately buy from them, give you that, you know, as a refund credit. But it wouldn't surprise me if they're stubborn to that as well and die on that hill all right next up in the preamble pixel gear so this is a playstation vr game i'm going to talk about this because of the type of game it is right um not in the sense of a review or a lookout for this but more as a personal exclamation point and i'll explain so the headline, so Upload VR has a review of this game, and the headline essentially says Voxel Visual meets Bland Wave Shooter. And that's the key right there. And I'm going to say, guys, officially, I am finally at that point now where I am mercifully tapping out and saying, okay, personally, Epix 911, I am done with Wave Shooter VR games. Unless they are original and bring something awesome to the table like I felt raw data did right 
mixing tower defense elements with objectives that had you at least moving around and thinking, I really don't have any interest anymore. I'm going to report on stuff, absolutely, but in terms of playing and really getting into it, unless it brings something new, no, I'm, I'm pretty much there right now, done with wave-based games. Some of you went, got to that point a lot sooner than I did, and some of you, you know what, fine, and that's, that's cool, that's, that's your right, are going to try and play every wave game that ever comes out from now on. No problem with that, just not what I'm going to do. I'm done. Next up, the, and this is a really cool looking device. It's called, and it has a good name, the Wolverine. So Stanford University mechanical engineering students developed this. It's obviously a very raw prototype, but take a look at the picture that I'm going to put up and I'll explain just briefly how it works. So it can detect the human grasp and release motions. So what happens when you do that, you know, end of your finger kind of grasping motions to grab something. There's a string attached basically, and what it does is it initiates a braking system, stops the motor, and essentially makes it so you can't grasp further. So whatever you were grabbing in virtual reality is actually grabbed in real life. It also does the reverse when it senses the release movement, the brakes are removed, the motor works again, and off you go. Now, way too cumbersome in that kind of state to effectively, practically use in a virtual reality setting. What's a positive there is that it's a movement in the right direction, the type of haptic feedback that a lot of us want to see, the ability to grab objects in a game would be so freaking awesome. And glad to see that strides are being made absolutely in that direction. I think most of us agree we want to see that, though, encapsulated in something way less bulky and more practical, you know, given that we already have this bulky thing on our head. Next up, Bohemia's Virtual Battle Space 3 Military Sim uh, adds Rift and Vive support. Now, this thing differs from games in that it's a hardcore military simulator. So if you're into that sort of thing, and you know, I certainly appreciate that with racing, flying, games, the simulation aspect. Almost as much as I like, you know, uh, the arcade. And yeah, probably the, the least of, of which is my ultimate, which is kind of a combination of the two. That would ultimately be my favorite. So uh, I would probably try it, even if it is a hardcore sim, just to see how that would differ from the game experience, right? Now, you may know these guys. They are a division of Bohemia Interactive. They're the guys who created the Arma franchise. So they've got a lot of experience in that arena. But again, keep in mind, this is a simulator. This isn't Onward or Battlefield or Call of Duty. It's a hardcore military simulation that cares more about accuracy on the battlefield than, you know, the arcadey elements, right? Next news piece, we get the first official HTC Vive branded virtual reality arcade in China. Uh, opens up in Shenzhen. It was announced by uh, Vive's regional president in China, Alvin Graylin, and I've talked about him many times, uh, one of which involved when I had that Vive issue. He, along with Daniel O'Brien, reached out to me pretty damn quick, which was appreciated, and he checked back multiple times. He didn't have to. Um, you know, granted, yes, it's on YouTube. Maybe that was why. But you know what? At least it gave me the feeling that he cared, even if he didn't, and I was just a deli number, right, <laughs> off the deli counter machine. But he checked up on me several times to see, you know, if how things were going and if I was happy with it. So anyways, he announced this VR arcade. And pay attention to the terminology I'm using because I'm going to refer back to that with the last story today. But check out some of the screenshots here. You can see what they've done is they've really nailed, in my opinion, the definition of a virtual reality arcade. They've got racing cockpit uh, done, you know, checked off essentially with those racing cockpits you can see, flying as well, 
room scale, seated. They seem to have nailed all those VR elements, which is exactly what I would hope for and want in a virtual reality arcade. Contrast that, and there's two extremes. We're gonna talk about one extreme first, calling yourself a VR arcade, and there was a Canadian example of this, when you've got one Vive unit in an open room with a chair. Sorry, to me, that's not an arcade. It's funny, there's an old bylaw in one of the cities that I lived in that actually referred to an arcade as an establishment that has four or more arcade machines. And I've kind of always ran with that statement as kind of my definition for an arcade, i.e. having my one arcade machine does not make this an arcade, right? Same with VR. I think minimum you should have a handful of VR units for people to try, right? But I get it. It's a new business. He's starting up. He's starting small. Um, you know, call yourself a VR experience, whatever. Once you grow and you have a full comprehensive kind of setup, then you brand yourself as an arcade. But again, just my opinion on that. Now, next up, we have Instagram CEO uh, Kevin Systrom saying that VR could play a critical role in Instagram. And some of that might be him. He's towing the party line, the Facebook, etc., right? But also, uh, you know, he envisions it that, hey, some point in the future, you could be with your buddies at a concert. Now, copyright reasons, obviously, uh, you know, assuming you don't have an agreement with them, then absolutely I could see that. It's more than likely we're talking three, five, ten second kind of bursts of being there as opposed to the whole experience but still cool to have that ability definitely would fall in line with the kind of progression you would think you'd have with a company like instagram that's really where they do need to go as opposed to just kind of staying you know uh, very flat social media only with screenshots bit of text so yeah, it'll be neat to see where all these social media sites are because we've heard, you know, Zuckerberg's kind of vision sort of for Facebook, but how is it actually going to look? And do you even care, right? Like in 10 years. Again, I think I mentioned it before, I rarely use Facebook. Not that important to me, you know, compared to games or experiences, but still, it will be interesting to see how it develops. Next up, Magic Leap CEO suggests that several development milestones have been hit officially. Also, their latest patent actually shows a much more streamlined unit than what we saw in earlier patent illustrations, where it actually looked pretty bulky and, yeah, just didn't look that comfortable. So, um, now they've got hundreds of millions raised, companies like Google, Alibaba supporting them in the past with investment uh, rounds, but they've been very secretive. So for me personally, it's hard to get really excited about these guys. I mean, we've seen some video clips, it's augmented reality, but tell us more about the technology. Get me more excited about what you're offering other than just some videos. Surely with the hundreds of millions raised, a little bit can be thrown at marketing at a little bit better. That, that's my thought. Now, Road to VR has an article where they're comparing four VR desktops for Vive and Rift. Now, for me personally, I couldn't put my thumb on it, but I thought about it uh, earlier today. Why have I been hesitant to use virtual reality desktop software? And it actually, yeah, it, it wasn't an obvious reason. I just thought, you know what, that's an area I'm really kind of deficient in. I don't really spend a lot of time there. What it is for me after thinking about it is the control scheme, architecture, whatever you want to call it. The mouse, which is, you know, good for 3D on a 2D monitor, just doesn't work in virtual reality at all. And yes, I know it's a 2D representation, but if you're going to play to the strengths of virtual reality in terms of a desktop, I think you need to be just, of, just as innovative with controls as we are on the game and experience side of things. So that's it for me personally is I just don't think we have a good enough control scheme 
to make it worthwhile to substitute my time. And I'd be interested in hearing from you guys how many of you have completely replaced regular desktop usage with virtual reality desktop, you know, using one of the four, virtual desktop, big screen, envelop, or multi-screens. So I know for me, I've checked it out a few times, but even for 30 minutes or so, it just hasn't been appealing. So yeah, curious if there's any of you out there that do use it more, more than me, which isn't, isn't that hard to do. All right, so this uh, last article kind of ties in with the, my, my thoughts on the VR arcade, etc. But this time, and I said that back then, I said the opposite extreme. And we're talking about virtual reality theme parks. So there's an article on VRScout.com saying, add Malaysia to the list of countries getting a VR theme park in the future. Now, to me, a theme park, Euro Disney, Disneyland, Magic Mountain, Knott's Berry Farm, Canada's Wonderland, you get the picture. Theme parks. They're large. They've got lots of amusement. Um, you know, it's a trip to a theme park should be something that you could spend an entire day being there. Like, I think grand. That's, that's what it translates to me. So if you said, what would you rather do? Go to a, a virtual reality arcade or virtual reality theme park. And I'm probably, depending on my mood, if I want large, grand scale, I'm going to pick the theme park, right? Because it turns out that this one in Malaysia that they're calling a theme park is three rooms. And I'm sorry. To me, hey, you can use whatever verbiage you want in your marketing, but it should be at least accurate, right? Use words that accurately convey the experience. And three rooms, to me, again, that's not a VR theme park. That's a virtual reality arcade or whatever the hell else you want to call it other than theme park. I know it's such a stupid little thing, but, you know, the marketing of it is so important, I think. Um, you know, places are called theme parks for a reason. So there you have it. That's it for the news today, guys. Off to other things for me. As always, cheers and definitely Catch you on the VR flip side.